I want you to not have to spend so much money every month. I also don't want to spend so much money every month. So today we're going to use our video editing software, Final Cut Pro, as a photo editing software. I'm going to show you how to create this thumbnail directly in Final Cut Pro and a lot of these tips and tricks you can hopefully use for just spicing up images in your videos. Way too much fluff for an intro of mine. Let's cut it out, hop into the tutorial. My trick for thumbnails is to make a bunch of different faces at the end of filming your video so you can then scrub through, find the face that you like, which when you have a face like this, that's really hard to do, but you then hit Shift H to create what's called a hold frame. This freezes your footage essentially, so it's a picture, but it's better than a freeze frame in Final Cut Pro because if you need to make adjustments to different effects that you have on the clip, you can. A freeze frame locks everything in, I believe. Now this frame was pulled from my girlfriend's footage. She just started her YouTube channel and this thumbnail that I'm gonna show you how to make is for a vlog of hers. So the next step is using the magnetic mask to cut yourself or your subject out from the background. Just head over to the magic wand icon, choose add magnetic mask and select whatever you wanna keep. If it grabs too much, just hold option and click on those areas to remove them then hit Analyze to track. Now you've got a clean cutout of your subject. When it comes to thumbnails, you usually want a simple background, not complex, not distracting. And if you don't believe me, look at successful YouTubers' thumbnails. They keep it super simple so you can tell what the thumbnail's about, even when it's tiny on your phone. For my girlfriend's channel, I searched for a free pink background on the internet to try and match her brand that she's creating. If your brand color is green or blue, search something like green textured background free and just drop it into FCP. Inside Final Cut, place the background under your cutout, then scale and position yourself however you'd like. Next, before applying any effects, make the cutout a compound clip. And we do this because if I press the transform tool, notice how the top of the frame is right here since we adjusted the position of this shot. This is a problem because if we add a glow or a drop shadow to this, that effect will be abruptly cut off right here. So select your shot, press option G to create a compound clip or right click the clip and hit create new compound clip and that'll create a new boundary that fills our video frame so we don't have any edge issues. Let's make our cutout pop a little more. So create a basic S curve to add contrast to your shot by using your Luma curve, which adjusts brightness. And just as a general guide, it helps to try and make the brightness and color of your subject match the surroundings of the thumbnail to have everything blend in better. So let's add a touch of the background color into our highlights so it looks like the pink background is reflecting onto our faces. Then let's jump into a color wheels and increase the saturation or the intensity of color of our entire shot by using the global saturation slider. Quick change, but a big difference. This next adjustment was one that my girlfriend tried in her thumbnail variation, and I really liked the look of it. And that is slightly increasing the size of your head to make the shot more interesting, intriguing, and unique. So duplicate the clip by holding Option and dragging up, add the magnetic mask, and cut out your head. Once you go through the magnetic mask process that we already learned how to do, Use the transform tool to rescale and position it, as well as add some feathering of the mask so the cutout is more of a gradual, softer cutout. And we'll do the same thing for my ugly mug. So hold Option to copy the original layer and go through that process again. Let's keep everything nice and neat and throw all of these layers into a compound clip. And that's because we're gonna add some different effects to this cutout shot of us. So we want everything to be in one. Go to your effects browser and look up noise reduction. Double click to apply it to your clip. We're gonna adjust the noise reduction to high and the sharpness to very high. I like the sharpening effect in the noise reduction preset way more than the normal sharpness effect for some reason. Just looks better. And the noise reduction helps to smooth everything out and make the texture look clean. If you're a subscriber to this channel, which I really hope you are, you'll know that I'm a big fan of adding glow to thumbnails. It just helps things to pop more. And for this thumbnail, I'd like to use a glow preset from a plugin from my buddy Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro. And it is his picture in picture plugin. I'm gonna show you a free way to create some outer glow in a second, but I've just found that this preset does a killer job at a nice glow outline, inner glow, and outer glow. After some adjustments, here's the look. 
It may seem like a lot, but if someone's scrolling through YouTube, this image of us is gonna catch someone's eye much quicker than an image without it. I wanted to add a Thai flag into my hand because the vlog is about our trip to Bangkok. So if you need to find images of objects for your thumbnail, look for the PNG versions of that image online. Those are basically just images with pre-cut out backgrounds, essentially. Our flag here is already cut out, but the stick that I found for the flagpole was not. So you have two options in situations like this. Try control right clicking your downloaded picture and go to quick actions and remove background and your computer will do its best to remove the background for you. But if that doesn't work, like here it didn't do a great job at removing all the white around the edge, just throw a magnetic mask on it and cut it out. And with both selected, use the transform tool to put them into position. Then do your best to color grade these elements to match your scene. So here, I'm just adjusting the contrast to fit a bit better and adding some pink tones to have the color fit better. And for the final touch on this prop, use the draw mask effect in your effects browser to cut out part of the object. So it looks like you're really holding it. Little tip for you when using this tool, hold command and click and drag your cursor so you can create curved points for this draw mask. So once again, that's command and then click and drag. Then just adjust the feather in your inspector window to make it look more natural. Now for text, don't go overboard here. One to four words at most. And generally with YouTube thumbnails, you wanna keep it around two to three elements. So for example, a picture of you, text, and an object or a logo. That's just a basic guideline. In my girlfriend's first draft, she had way too much going on. She wrote first time Bangkok, spicy, and scammed. Way too much text that'd prevent potential viewers from clicking it. So keep it simple, intriguing, and perhaps add text that plays off the title of your video or compliment. It. So for example, in a recent video of mine, the title is your voice audio sucks, instantly fix it for free. And the thumbnail plays off the title because it makes you wonder, how can I have voice audio to fix with no mic? So press control T to add a basic title and adjust your font. Let's pick Roboto here, but I'm a big fan of the fonts Bebas, Montserrat, and Inter, which is what Apple uses. Something you might like trying is going down to face and switching this to gradient have one point be white and one be slightly gray and adjust these two points to be closer together to create a look that has almost a metallic feel. It's unique and feels like more than just white text. Then add some heavy drop shadow to make it stand out from the background. Typically, you'd want dark text to go with a light background like this so the text stands out, but I think we may be able to get away with it with a bunch of drop shadow. But because we can't add more drop shadow in the text inspector, we can throw this text layer into a compound clip. That way, we're able to head to our effects browser and add the drop shadow effect to help this text stand out even more. You could even hop into the compound clip and play around with adding an outline to this text to see if that makes the text look better. And by the way, you click this button to get out of a compound clip, in case you didn't know. Let's create some outer glow without the use of plugins. Copy the clip by holding Option and dragging down so it's behind the cutout picture of you. Increase the scale of it, and we're going to brighten it to bits. Color it pink, and go to your effects browser to either add a Gaussian blur to it, or for this instance, maybe a radial blur. In order to have the glow hug our bodies a bit better, just bring up the transform tool and move this side point inward to stretch it closer together. You'll often see thumbnails that have that wow factor to them, something that's a little shocking. Not always, but sometimes. That wow factor makes the thumbnail more intriguing and convinces the viewer that they need to click on the video to learn more. My girlfriend's vlog has a scene where we try eating crocodile meat in a Bangkok market. This is a bit shocking, so it makes sense that that might do well as a focal point in the thumbnail, instead of having a bunch of different distracting food elements like she tried initially. I masked out the crocodile using the magnetic mask with the steps that we've gone over, but little pro tip, if the mask selection isn't as fine-tuned as you'd like, use the paintbrush tool to make it more exact. Once that's finished, you can use the flipped preset in your effects browser to flip the image evenly. And to make the head of the croc stand out more, I've chosen another frame of the video with the croc head, used the magnetic mask to cut that out, and then put it into position using the transform tool. We could even add a plate underneath the croc, and we'll use the magnetic mask to cut out that plate 
and just add a bit of contrast after with our Luma Curve. Let's throw the croc layers into a compound clip and adjust our colors to fit the scene a bit more. You could even add the drop shadow effect to create some realism for the objects in your thumbnail and play with the blur effect on this drop shadow till you find a look that you like. The small stuff like this makes a huge difference. Now let's say you wanna add some more text with all the same adjustments that you did on the original text. You could copy this text here by holding option and dragging, but the problem is that if you make any adjustments on this text that's in this compound clip, it'll affect the compound clip with the original text too. So to prevent this, go to clip, reference new parent clip, and now any adjustments will not affect the original compound clip. We could even add more drop shadow to make our text stand out more. And by the way, to apply this drop shadow to this other text quickly, just drag the effect directly from your inspector window to the other text layer on your timeline. Another small but powerful adjustment you can make to add more depth and professionalism to your text is by using the draw mask effect or the magnetic mask to cut out areas of the text so it looks like it's behind other things in your shot. So what I'd suggest you do so you can see what you wanna cut out better is press V to disable the text clip, make the cutout points, then turn on that text layer again by pressing V, invert the mask, add some feathering, and maybe adjust the drop shadow position so it doesn't look so weird. When you're happy with the thumbnail, you could throw everything into a compound clip. If you want to keep everything neat, then go to File, Share, Save Current Frame. And if you don't see Save Current Frame, you can click Add Destination to add it manually to your export destinations. Set the file to JPEG. And since Final Cut is exporting this out in 4K, so 3840 by 2160, we need to take our exported thumbnail and go to the free site image2go.com to resize it to 1280 by 720, which are the dimensions needed for YouTube thumbnails. You could maybe even throw the thumbnail into ChatGPT and ask it to resize it, but I'm not sure if that works though. And with that, you're all set and ready to upload the thumbnail to YouTube. I realize this video was long, but hopefully it taught you a few things. Let me know that it did in the comments. And make sure you watch this video because I think you would enjoy it. Have a great rest of your day.